Hey guys, welcome back to the Crypto Picture channel where I help you see crypto through a clear lens. Just want to do a little market update uh, a little bit earlier than usual today. Uh, I know there's a little bit of blood in the streets, but uh, nothing that we haven't really been in, uh, expecting entirely. I'm still bullish to the upside. Um, all I see here is a retest of previous support levels, resistance turned to support. As we can see here on the Ethereum chart we've been monitoring, um, we've basically just come back down and retested the bottom end of this support channel that, or support range that we've had here uh, outlined for the last few videos. Nothing uh, too crazy from my opinion. I have us on the weekly right now and I'm on UTC time. So we're actually a day ahead. So this is the 15th at the moment. So we are seeing a sell signal here on the market cipher, but you have to remember we have essentially seven days to confirm this red dot before it is um, factual or confirmed. So as of right now, I'm not taking into consideration until it is actually printed. Uh, still Castic, still in the bullish control zone versus Bitcoin. If I go down to the lower time frames, you see we're coming back down here where the anchor wave likes to give another bounce to the upside. So getting into these oversold levels versus Bitcoin right on our support line. Previously, a uh, small extension to the upside roughly about 6% to the upside versus Bitcoin. Over here, we got an extension from the buy signal, six, just under 7% to the upside. But if you look at these previous ones, uh, we got much larger moves. So again, I'm not too, too concerned. We've seen it come into red before um, and we've continued to go up in our Bitcoin pair. As I said, I'd like to see a weekly close below this green support range before I started considering selling any of my ults and getting back into Bitcoin or cash. So we'll keep you up to date on that. But what I'm looking at right now is just a test of all support. As you remember, I did go over the Bitcoin dominance, I believe in the last video, and I said we could get a test back up to 62 to 64%. We got back up here to about 63.4%, which is close enough for my liking. I'm okay with this. Uh, we may break out here. We may get a little bit over my resistance line here, which was previous support turned to resistance. We popped our head above it slightly, confirmed it again as resistance. This is right now on the four hour bullish candle, but we still have about um, one hour to confirm this candle. Uh, again, yeah, could we poke our head over here? Sure. Um, I mean, the Ethereum Bitcoin chart breaking that structure on a weekly close would you validate a continuation up for Bitcoin dominance. Again, until things are confirmed, I'm continuing with my thesis. If it gets confirmed that we were wrong, then we were wrong. But at least we won't be riding it all the way up with no plan. At least we know that if these things do get confirmed by the end of this week, then we will be moving the majority of our money back into Bitcoin if Bitcoin continues to go up and leave the rest of the market behind. If we are seeing a correction over the entire market, then I would say, yeah, we'll likely uh, just have some cash reserves on the side. Uh, you should be in a decent amount of profit where you can sell most of your coins at you know, roughly, you know, you should be up 50 to 100 to 200 to 300 percent since we started entering this market. Uh, if you're not, then you're selling and buying way too much. Um, right here, Cardano. And this is another thing that makes me very interested and bullish, actually. I was looking at some of the funding rates uh, and funding rates, essentially what they are. And this will be my tidbit for you guys today. Funding rates are the percentage that you pay 
the exchange to either hold a long position or a short position if you're using leverage. So there was some crazy funding rates and Alex Saunders also mentioned this in one of his videos recently. So this is kind of what we see to get a long push out of the market to push all the longs out of the market we get this because some people are using like 10x leverage on a uh, volatile asset like look at this candle like this is a four out six hour candle and it was up and down 39 percent like if you're using leverage on an asset that is going up uh roughly 203 percent in about 10 days then you should be a professional and you should know how to manage your risk. But for most people, you should be pretty happy with 200% in 10 days. Like there should be no reason that you require to use leverage in all honesty. I mean, um, if you want to get really risky and take added risk in an already very volatile market, then that's up to you. I don't condone leverage. Have I used it in the past? Yes, but I only really use it on Bitcoin and Ethereum as they're trending sideways on shorter time frames. If we're getting these giant moves, then I'm okay uh, not using leverage. Like I'm totally fine just holding my positions because I do would not want to get liquidated or get pushed out of a position during a giant uptrend. So as you can see, look at the size of this wick to the downside. That's telling me that there's so many buyers stepping in here and buying up Cardano. Uh, this is very visible on USDT charts, or sorry, USD charts. Look at this wick. Look at this wick. This this is the same wick that we saw at the bottom here, right? Uh, we saw some wicks here that were pretty high to the or pretty low to the downside. We got a reversal. So am I worried? Absolutely not. Uh, this is second nature to me now i'm so used to this uh this thing doesn't even bother me anymore if we look here we got another huge wick came down touch our support level the previous consolidation area so essentially most support levels will come back and retest the previous consolidation areas during the uptrend and that's exactly what we've got here so i'm not making any rash decisions i'm not doing anything crazy at the moment i'm continuing to hold all my altcoin positions but this is also why i tell you if you're in smaller altcoins you should be taking some profits in back into your ethereum so as you guys know i brought it up the other day when i was referring to some of my speculative uh plays that i have taken profits into ethereum now we're going to start seeing all the uh, scary news come out and all this stuff and uh, you know I keep seeing this you know uh, I mean we saw it back here saw it back here uh, well if we look at the ethereum chart it's probably better to look at I mean I was seeing scary stuff here right oh it's going all the way back down to like six hundred dollars when it was coming here oh we're going all the way back down to seven hundred dollars and then it came here and then it went down and everybody's like oh we're going back to eight hundred dollars and it never gets to these places that people are expecting. I mean, we are in a bull market until proven otherwise. As I mentioned to you guys, we'll never sell the top. We're not going to buy the bottoms. If you do buy the bottoms, great. That's awesome. You're not going to catch the last bottom dollar. You may get relatively close. You may get some good signals uh, from whatever indicators you guys are using. And they might get you relatively close to the bottom, and, and that's great. You know, I, I was fortunate enough to buy uh, some Bitcoin and some Ethereum relatively close to their bottoms. So um, in the macro trend, I believe, you know, around 4.2K uh, Bitcoin, uh, just under $200 Ethereum uh, continued to buy uh, on the way up as well, right? So as I got confirmations that we are in fact heading into a bull market i was more comfortable continuing to average in on the way up so as of right now i just wanted to do a quick update tell you guys how i'm feeling i'm i'm comfy i'm cozy i'm gonna sleep good tonight so uh i just wanted to reassure you guys uh yeah i mean sure could we come down here yeah it's possible i mean anything is possible but until we get a significant sign that we are in fact reversing on the long-term macro time frame i'm okay 
I will monitor Bitcoin dominance to know if I should be or, you know, I'll try to help you guys with that as well to know whether we should be in altcoins or we should be in Bitcoin. And then we're going to monitor the Bitcoin chart to know if the macro trend is shifting. This is a tiny little dip. It's like 6%, 4% now for Ethereum. Uh, some of these coins went down 23%. Now they're only down 10%. Uh, Elrond went down to about 97 bucks. It's already bouncing all the way back up to $130. As I've been stating many times, dips are for buying in bull markets, not financial advice, but that's what I make of it. I just wanted to play a quick clip. I know some people are super bullish on Bitcoin over Ethereum. Uh, I just wanted to play this. This is Mark Cuban. It's taken off of alt altcoin daily's channel um it was taken off of another person's uh channel that had the interview with mark cuban but i like how they just dissected the parts that were good i haven't had time to watch the full one hour interview to be honest i've had a roughly busy day so yeah let's just watch a couple of uh maybe five minutes of this i just wanted you to see mark cuban's thoughts on ethereum and why i remain so bullish on ethereum and when you have billionaires like this talking about it uh you know it has real value so i'll play this and then we'll uh, finish off the day after that uh finish off the video so yeah enjoy oops sorry it doesn't have any volume here Give me one second. One moment. We'll get into NFTs. All they're going to know is Ethereum. Mm -hmm. And they're all going to have to buy Ethereum in order to do it, right? Wow. Okay. So you, you think Ether has an advantage over Bitcoin as a store of value? Right now, for new people coming in, yes. Wow. Because so here's my logic, and I know mm -hmm. everybody's going to mention me, right? So if I decide I like digital art, mm -hmm. how do I buy digital art? We need it. Yeah. And if there's thousands of people a day, 2,000 people a day coming in, relative to the size of the number of people doing this, right? That's impactful because every now and then one of them is going to be a whale and they're going to buy a thousand ether. Right, and because they want to go out there and be able to buy that big artwork, and then on top of that, you're going to start to see music and and um, entertainment videos um, and movies, for that matter, posted on OpenSea or Rarible or wherever, right? Um, because that's a better way to sell it. Mm. And what are they going to see? And what are they going to have to do if they want to do their own store? They're going to have to spend their five or six hundred dollars in Ethereum. Right, you know, half of half an ETH just to be able to play the game. There's nothing in this ecosystem that says you have to buy Bitcoin first in order to transact or do something within DeFi or within any of the digital goods marketplace. Wow. Okay, we'll go on to the next one here: Bitcoin versus Ethereum. Ethereum. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Most people coming in right now fall into two categories store value i want to make some money bitcoin right mm -hmm. so if you're an investor first bitcoin but everybody else collectors why would they buy bitcoin ethereum even with all that hassle once you get your arms around it it's less hassle than going to deal with the bank <coughs> Pardon more me. people realize that then you start seeing that rush mm -hmm. and so that's when that's why i got involved that's why i think ethereum is going up and up and up and up because that's the easiest way to yield farm bitcoin is not an easy way to yield farm for for most people right mm -hmm. you've got to do your swaps and da 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 um but ethereum is easy and you know and that's become the currency for all your swaps and or most swaps right and it's become the currency for a lot of you know smart contracts and so people are seeing that and as more people are coming in i think that's why you know bitcoin it made its bed to be a store of value and you know the algorithmic scarcity um is a great selling tool it's a great narrative and that's not going away and you know i can see the argument being made for people to put it in their treasury and to you know to use it as an alternative and that's good, but you know, for those part of the problem is 
for those people who want to yield farm, trying to go through the process of going into wrapped um, Bitcoin, right, and making that swap. Yeah. You got to hope that they, you know, that the people behind wrapped Bitcoin are doing their job mm -hmm. to make sure that it tracks exactly right. And there's some risk associated with that. Yeah. And it's just complex and hard to do. I mean, not hard there, to do. There's no reason. I mean, there's no reason to go and wrap your Bitcoin if you can just directly do it with ETH. Yeah. So he's bullish Bitcoin, but he's extremely bullish on Ethereum. And that's kind of my thesis. Like, I am very bullish on Bitcoin, but I'm extremely bullish Ethereum. The ecosystem is built out so far and the network effect just continues to grow and people continue want to develop on it. And it just seems to be an amazing technology that allows everybody to participate in a decentralized economy or ecosystem that is fair for everyone. So I'll leave you off with that. Have a good one. Uh, don't get too scared with the dip. <laughs> It'll be all right. And we are still in a macro bull market. And maybe I'll go over Market Cipher and the macro thesis that I use with Market Cipher that is essentially going to be uh, my exit out of the market. Probably will never exit entirely out of the market, but I'll probably sell 60 to 70% of my holdings, maybe more depending on what's happening. And I'll kind of go over uh, the the macro shift from the bear market or beginning of the bear market to the bull market. So that might make a good video for the next one. So with that being said, have a good one, guys. Take care. And next, well, we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.